Hey everybody, Lon Naylor here with LearnCamtasia.com and have you ever created a video with narration and ended up with some nasty little surprises in your audio? Like this? Now press the submit button. Ow! These are called plosives and in this video I'm going to show you how to fix those without having to re-record your narration. Let's get started. First of all, plosives are the result of us saying certain words that begin with certain consonants that produce a forceful burst of air that comes out of our mouth, such as any word that starts with a P or a B or a T. The culprit is that we usually have the microphone too close to our mouth and the little membrane inside that picks up sound gets hit with this forceful burst of air oh. and consequently records it. Of course, the best way to not have to deal with these is to not record them in the first place. So be sure you don't talk directly into your microphone at close range or use something like a pop filter to break up that forceful burst of air. There are lots of techniques for doing this, but that's not the purpose of this video. I'm going to show you how to fix that which already exists. Here in Camtasia, I have a project open that my partner Michelle is actually working on for a client and on the timeline I've dropped a few markers where some of these offensive plosives have happened. And we can also see that Michelle has already made a bunch of her edits. It looks like here she snipped out some maybe dead space and had to split the clips and inject some extra space in certain places. So essentially all of the timing of the narration edits have already been done here. So let's pick one and zoom in on the timeline a bit so we can get some more detail. And right here where this spike is, is basically the offending plosive that I demonstrated for you earlier. Right? Now one might be tempted to think that you can perhaps zoom all the way in on the timeline and just highlight that area that we heard and go ahead and snip it out. Let's try that. And then play this section. Now press the submit. What you notice is that I still have a popping sound. And the reason that I can't effectively edit these in Camtasia is that I'm zoomed all the way in. And the smallest level that I can select is basically one frame. And if you think about it, the project's at 30 frames a second, so this amount of time it's basically one thirtieth of a second. And the issue in Camtasia is that, gosh, that's just not enough detail to cleanly be able to pull all of that offending noise out. And the waveform down here doesn't necessarily give me an accurate representation of all of the little nuances of that plosive. That's why I kind of miss that little popping sound at the end here. But even if I wanted to get rid of that, Again, I'd have to try to select just one frame. And at some point, I'm going to end up cutting into her actual word, again, because I can't get to that level of detail. So here's how we're going to fix it. Let's zoom out to the entire timeline. And if Camtasia isn't the proper tool to do the job, what I'm going to be looking for is an audio editing program. I like a free tool called Audacity, so here's how we're going to kind of attack this problem. On a video that's already been edited, all the timing is set, and we're ready to go, we just want to clean it up a little bit more. Step number one is I'm going to go up to Share, and I'm going to Export Audio Only. I'll give it a name, and save it in my project folder as a WAV file. Now that that's done, let's jump over to Audacity. This is a free program, does a nice job, and I'll put some links and stuff for where you can get it, install it. There are lots of tutorials out there on how to use it, so I'm not going to get into that so much. We're going to use it for this specific purpose. So in Audacity, let's go to File, Open, and go find that audio that we exported from Camtasia. Now by default, Audacity may or may not import your audio file as a stereo track and we really don't want that so if you see two tracks here 
I'm going to go to audio project and split stereo to mono and then just delete one of the tracks. And right off the bat, we'll see that there's a little more detail in the waveform in Audacity. And if we look at some of these spikes that we see here, these are likely the offending objects that we're going to go ahead and take a look at getting rid of. So let's kind of highlight one of these and give it a play. The form with the cloud. Okay, that's a little bit of something we'll probably take care of. Let's find that plosive P. Now press the submit button and your cloud. So I'm going to hold my control key here and use my mouse wheel to zoom in on this area. And what we'll start to see is that the human voice has a lot of frequencies in it. It's very dense and full looking. Whereas noise is generally a lot less frequencies involved and it's kind of easy to pick out. So let's see if we can just highlight that section without cutting into our actual voice. Give it a listen. That's all noise. Pretty much noise. And now I'm starting to hear her voice. So we'll back it off just a little bit. Press the delete key. Button. And we've pretty much gotten rid of most of that. So further on down the timeline, here's another good example. Print the class roster. Print the class roster. Let's zoom in. And again, we'll see this distinctive wave action going on here. Highlight it, give a listen. And a good indication of things you might want to remove is how loud is the actual noise. Again, we kind of see from the height of the peak here that eh, that might be a problem. But if you preview it, notice my meters up here get well up into the top area and the top range here. And that's really not what we want to have in there. So anything that kind of creeps above the minus 24 dB area here, those are things that you might want to take a look at. So let's go ahead and we'll make that highlight and delete it. And I'm going to zoom out again a little bit and we'll preview that. Print the class. Print the class. So we can see that we kind of got rid of that nasty plosive. And at this point, I pretty much just kind of continue the process and listening for anything that might be too plosive. I'll go ahead and pause this video while I go through and make a bunch of those changes. I usually always kind of recheck it just to make sure I didn't cut into anything too much. On the Cutting out just the plosive parts, we don't really have to worry about timing because it's such a minute amount of time that they occur, you can just snip them out. But sometimes there are other portions that we might want to fix also, like little smacking noises or heavy breathing. And I don't want to cut too much of these kinds of things out because I might mess up my timing. So in a case like this, where it's just kind of right at the beginning of a word, uh, a lot of times I will just go ahead, highlight it, and silence the audio. That will remove the little imperfection, but not affect any of the timing of the length of the clip. OK, once I'm done making all the edits and things that I want to do, I might go ahead also and add some effects, like noise removal, compression, and normalization. I'm not going to get into that in this particular video, but I'm kind of happy with my edits. It's going to be sounding a lot better. So I'm going to go to File and Export Audio. I'll give this a name that lets me know that it's been modified. And you can either save it as an MP3 or a WAV file. WAV files are uncompressed, so the file size is going to be a lot bigger, but the quality will be uh, a little bit better. Quite frankly, I can hardly tell the difference between MP3 and WAVE 
for audio narration that's used in video. Uh, so I'm just going to save it as an MP3. If you'd like to continue to work on this as an audio project, I kind of recommend saving as a project. This will save an Audacity project that you can open up and work on at a later time. So let's head back over to Camtasia and see how we can use this modified file. It's generally a good idea to go ahead and save your project as another version just so you have a backup. And then what I'm going to do is click on the audio narration track and say select all media on track and hit the delete key. Then in our media bin let's go ahead and import media find our modified audio file put the playhead at the very beginning of the project and then drop our new audio file down onto the timeline. Here's our example piece let's see how that sounds. Now press the submit button now press the submit button. So there you have it. I hope that helps you in your efforts to make better, more professional screencasts. Hey, thanks for watching.